Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my precious pack. No matter what time of day it is, I have some patch notes to go over with all of you. And everyone may already know this, but we finally got the ship that I wanted the entire time, and that is the Harvester. It will be the primary feature in the Catalyst event on December 6th. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna go over the event details, and the name of it, as I said, is the Catalyst, and the objective is aid Curies in her quest to get revenge on the Umbra. Enlist the help of the Axis Harvester Dreadnought. That's right, everybody. We get a Harvester, finally. And I'm going to talk about what I think it's going to look like a little bit in just a few minutes. And put an end to the Umbra threat. Now to the good content changes, and something I can't wait to start playing around with is something that me and Toxic Bay talked about a while back. Now, if any of you don't know, Toxic Bay is also a YouTuber. He plays other games other than Vega quite often on his channel, and I, I would advise all of you to take a look at his videos, because there is something for everybody over there, just like I do here. But, here's the main content change that I want to see, other than the Harvester. Fleet Commanders. Take your fleets to new heights with Fleet Commanders. Assign a commander to a fleet for bonuses that grow as they gain experience in combat. So they level up in combat. Now, me and Toxic, we talked about an idea like this a while back. And the basic idea was that they level up through combat and they unlock new abilities. Certain leaders, uh, at the time we actually had it, so it was just the basic leaders in the game. We had Sybil, Burr, several from Vega, several from uh, Vega Security, and dish, just different names and stuff like that. And the main objective was each one had a certain goal, and certain um, commanders would do certain things. So one commander may increase your fleet's cargo hauling capacity by, you know, 50, 60, 100 percent. And it would be very interesting to see what they've got, but right now I have no information on them. I'm going to have to join the Discord and take a look at what they have going on over there. Hopefully it will be more information than I have, and hopefully it peaks at some of the stuff so I can talk about it. Refit 2.0 New refit mechanics are here. Shorten the time of your refits on holes that have components currently equipped. That's going to be good for refitting anything when during main events and stuff like that. If you need to refit it and you don't have excess coins, you know, you start the refit on day one and you need it on the last day of the event. Now to the harvester. Equipped with a 360 degree firing arc. That's right, this baby has no blind spot. So if anyone thinks they can treat it like the behemoth, you're dead wrong. You can't hide behind it. It has a jump, a jump drive slot, which I actually found interesting. They're giving a jump drive to a harvester. That's going to be insane. That means that you could go out in the sector with this thing all by itself. You can start ripping your targets apart that you want to, all while staying comfy and safe. Oh, and it has the triggered damage AOE that the standard harvester have. And the description that they have up in the forum for the post is... The Axis Harvester Dreadnought is a feared monster of the skies, and I would just like to point this out and correct this. We're not in the skies, everybody. We're not around a planet. We're fighting in open space. There is no sky, as you would say. We're in open dead space. There is absolutely nothing out there. Well, meteorites and things like that every now and then. Asteroids. Other than that. Because we don't fight in planetary combat. Tech. This is where the stuff starts to get good, and this is where the stuff that we've needed all along is at. Equip Thermic Disruptors to increase the range capabilities and shield damage done by your Blight Cannon weapons. Yes, finally, you actually fixed those. Tech, the Incendiary Corpus component increases the speed and explosion radius of your Blight missiles. Okay, but I I don't see the point in actually using them because we only have one type of missile and it's garbage against any type of cutter unless they try and face hug it. Well, if they face hug it, it's going to be useless. And at range, it's useless. It's only good against clumped up units such as bases or anything like that. Next tech. Enhance your blight driver weapons with the new Apex Impaler Special. The only thing it literally needs to do with that is just increase the amount of freaking speed that the shells have. They move slowly enough that if you fully fit a cutter fleet with just movement speed, put a carrier with them, and have them outrun a shell, by default you should be able to outrun it because you get 30% increased movement speed on top of 
well, added to from the base number, and then you add thruster speed, and you count harmonic benefits. And most of the time, you can just simply dodge the driver shots from the atomic driver, because it's just, it wasn't a well-thought-out weapon at the time. Standard, yes, because we have all the other boosters and stuff for it. Okay. The Void Binary Thrusters are designed especially for fast, evasive... Okay, yeah, 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 they're basically just the same thing. We already have binary thrusters for the Void ships. Don't really care about that, because I don't PvP and mine are going to be more or less for guarding other fleets at this point. Or for cargo hauling, which is why I've been using them for a lot lately. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting, because they wanted to buff the Behemoth which is our current Dreadnought. And this is how they did it. Outfit your Behemoth Dreadnought with the Ifrit Thruster to boost its maneuverability. The only two things that that Ifrit Thruster needs is to be able to increase the rotation speed by 2 to 3 degrees and increase its acceleration speed by 100%. That's all it needs. Literally, that's it. Other than that, as you mark upgrade, it gets better and better in the later mark upgrades, they just get insane for what it can do. Tech. The Dreadnought's Hostility Augment component boosts its ablative recovery and weapon jamming when nearby enemy ships lose their shields or ablative armor. Okay, this one was interesting. They gave it weapon jamming just like the bloody little race. Now, the one thing I know about the race is when you have two or more of them and they start focus firing a single ship, their jamming abilities stack. And I mean they actually stack, so if you have 100% increase because you have Mark V race, you focus fire a single ship, it loses its ablative or its shields, and you can basically say that it's never going to fire on you again because its reload time is going to go astronomically high, and it's just not going to be able to reload and fire again before it's dead. So that aspect of it, the weapon jamming, I wasn't a fan of because I don't see it as needing it. However, the ablative recovery, that was where it was needed. The ablative recovery was more than necessary because it always loses its ablative layer exceptionally easily just because it doesn't have the damage per second to meet that 5,000 easily during the lower levels. And I mean marked levels. It can easily do it later, especially in Mark VI when you fully fit the bloody thing with exceptionally heavy weaponry and especially exceptionally heavy weaponry as well. It can easily keep it up for days. But now, let's go ahead and let's take a look in the game. And I'm going to talk now about what I think the Dreadnought will look like. As we know, the Axis were not shy of actually building on the dead bodies of aliens. Well, actually, we're going to take a look at the Xeno, because they truly did build on the dead body of one of the aliens, the unknown aliens at the time. And that was the suppressor. Looks normal from the overview, right? Well, anyone who's flown the thing, all you have to do is turn it and you'll know immediately what I'm talking about. It looks like they built a ship over the corpse of an alien. And I have a feeling that the Axis Harvester is going to look exactly like a standard Harvester, but it's going to look like something was built over it. So, you know, we're going to have a ship, a bridge, and things like that on top of it. And I cannot wait to see what it looks like. Because that's the one ship I was waiting for. And at this time, none of the updates have happened, as you can see. So we still have to wait. And I actually have like, a few problems with the Ifrit Thruster and the other thing to fix its um, ablative layer. If they rely on the ship's weight, then they didn't resolve anything. Because the biggest problem about that ship is its weight. When you want it to be decently fitted to be able to fight what you want it to, you can't really put anything in increases or use the ship's weight because it'll instantly overweight it, especially if you decide that you want a certain thruster. So if they have any weight requirement, they're not going to resolve anything. Now, if they have no weight requirement and they actually just negatively affect ablative or they have an ablative requirement, then it'll be fine. Or at least it should be. We'll have to wait and see. On the note of the Umbra, I'm just going to go ahead and complain about them for a minute. Not a single one of them needs their overdrive. This is something that I've I've taken plenty of time to think into as of lately, and every tier from Axis and up, well, from Xeno Division up, has had one unique thing. Xeno Division introduced alien weapons. Axis continued on with that tradition using alien weapons, 
But then they took up the arms of using a brand new type of item. Well, their unique part or feature was harmonics. The Altarians, which are above the axes, brought overdrives. Umbra brought blight weapons, recovering armor, which regenerates as it fights, just by simply doing damage, just to clarify. But they also gave them overdrives. And something that they didn't need were overdrives, because they they were already going to be stronger than Altarians just because of their base stats before the overdrives. First off, they're going to be better against Altarians just due to their damage type. They're going to be doing increased damage. They have shield bypass. They literally are meant to destroy Altarians. So adding an overdrive is just insult injury. Now, what could have been done with them instead of an overdrive was a default ablative layer. So that just like the behemoth, every single one of the Umbra ships, including the Phoenix, would have been given the ablative armor layer. So they would have had a very light armored layer. So it would have been advised to actually equip them, but in the case of Phoenix, you couldn't add ablative, so it would be stuck with whatever it had. But they would have a default amount, a default regeneration amount, and a default damage requirement. That could have been how they did that, but instead they gave them overdrives, which were completely unnecessary. And again, the ablative recovery of the ships that do have it was fine. Because they could have actually given them ablative layers and dealt with the recovery as they did. Because that would have been more than acceptable. Giving them an overdrive was... It was a step too far. They already made them better. They didn't have to add the overdrive in my eyes. I hope I'm not the only one that shares that view. Because the Umbra, they were the first step into a new tier. Well, the next half tier. But that that's about all I want to talk about. And I, I really can't wait. I really want to see what the Harvester looks like. And the fact that it's being offered as an event prize means that I'm going to show everybody, more or less, how I'm going to farm it. And I'm going to take some of my Axis ships that I have that are just lounging around. And yes, they've been getting fat and lazy eating donuts at the base because they've all been sitting around. But I'm going to take a few different of my old Axis ships, and I'm going to drag them out into the fight, and I'm going to use them. The objective of that is I'm going to show everybody how to use the ships I used to use, and these will be my light fittings, with the exception of this one, because this one was just... What I built it for was questionable at the time, because even now I don't even think... I think it was supposed to be for assisting in the outpost due to the armor fitting against Alien and Kinetic. But I'm going to drag them out, and I'm going to show them off, well, more or less, fight using them for a little while with the goal of simply showing everybody that if you use Axis tier stuff to earn the Axis Dreadnought, that it'll be a little bit easier, and then you're going to have to start dealing with upgrading your Dreadnought, because just like the Behemoth, I have an eerie feeling that they're going to give us more grind targets just for this other one, but they're going to be lower level because they're going to match the tier, so they're going to have lower level grind targets for the mark upgrades. For all of you, so you should be able to use Axis tech against the targets, and they're most likely going to be Axis ships or alien ships, which will be just fine. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to make sure that I save up my coins until then, and I'm going to get time tokens, blood amber, everything I possibly can from this moment on, and I'm going to try and build that Dreadnought as quickly as I possibly can and try and use it during its debut event so that I can show it off. Um, the other thing I'm going to do... Man, I'm running that breath. The other thing I'm going to do is hop on Discord, and I'm going to join their Discord, and I'm going to take a look around and see if there's any information out, out, out about it already. Hopefully there is. Hopefully there's some type of view on it or picture or something, because I want to see what it looks like ahead of time. Even though we can all already guess that it's going to look just like the Harvester, as I said, but with something built on top of it. But that's going to be it. This was just the update notes. I literally didn't deal with the decimation, so for anyone wondering what happened with the decimation video, I decided not to do it because the waiting for the phase for the targets that I was going to recommend was taking too long. And I just didn't feel like waiting around, so I started grinding away at the behemoth targets. I'm working on the Mark 3s now because, you know, me disappearing for the like two-week period didn't help at all. 
but I'm going to be working on catching up very, very slowly. And I'm going to be farming the targets, I'm going to be testing them, I'm be using the Axis ships to make a separate video, I'm going to do strategies for fighting the targets in the event, using some Axis ships. Hopefully there will be some unknown alien targets, because their debut ship is from the faction that the main target enemy was the unknown. But that's going to be it, everybody. If you want to share your excitement, the fact that we're getting a harvester, most definitely do so in the chat or the comment section below. I need to stop saying chat. I'm not on Discord right now. <laughs> but go ahead and share it below in the comment section because I hope you're just as excited as I am for it. And another thing that I hope they don't screw up with it is I hope that they give it the Axis ship requirement because if anybody knows, you could build Axis ships with all level 10 requirements. Level 10 ship factory, level 10 uh, ship lab, um, arms lab and tech lab as well as your fleet bay all that had to just be level 10 that was it hopefully they keep true to that and they allow you to build it with all that stuff because it's for the tier that that was basically meant for and it would be very good if they did and I really hope that they do because it would be a great help to anybody that can't fully upgrade their base because if we have one Dreadnought that already requires a maxed out base, and they add another one for a lower tier but it requires a maxed out base, it makes no sense because the rest of the stuff could be built in that lower tier. But, that's going to be it, everybody. Leave some comments. If you just want to say hi, say hi. Oh, speaking of which, um, Dan M, I think your name was? Is that profile picture of Bowsette? I think that is. Second, Burbo. Hi. Uh, toxic. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit in-game as I can. But mostly we're going to be talking through the forum as we have been because most of the time I'm off or I'm repairing as you can probably see from the absurd repair time I've taken this time around. But so far the fleet hasn't been completely destroyed. I'm farming away. I'm dealing with targets and I'm going to be releasing videos on targets that attack on a daily basis as I slowly work out the fighting strategy against them. But for now, this is what you get. An update video on the notes and stuff like that. That's going to be it, everybody. If you liked the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content for just about any purpose. There's varying videos everybody can find. And as always, everybody, stay safe, stay safe out there in the void. <laughs> and I'll see you all very soon.